Well, firstly, we've got Sheffield United and, and Wolves that have crept into that fight for the top four, which we never thought was really possible because Wolves, for instance, started the season before anybody else. They've played more games than anyone else because they tried to qualify for the Europa League. They've qualified now for the last 32, which again is remarkable. The team seems to be getting ever better, so let's not discount them, but I'd say they're probably an outside bet. Sheffield United, exactly the same. Uh, Chris Wilder and his, and his men, just incredible what they keep doing. Um, another game now against Bournemouth and they can have a couple of weeks rest uh, for this mid-season break. Will really come at a right time for them because they've played, you know, as a group, they've made very few changes to their 11. In fact, the least amount of changes to any other manager. Um, and then you look at the teams you expected, Arsenal probably fallen out of it now, Manchester United, Spurs and Chelsea, and that's going to be a real dogfight through to the end. I think Chelsea... It's in their hands. They've played against Manchester United and um, Spurs coming up for their home matches. Um, and what they do against those teams will define what they do for the rest of the season. I think Frank Lampard, of course, he's, we know he's doing a great job with the young kids, but an awful lot of changes being made to his starting eleven. It's different combinations at the back. Uh, you know, He needs to settle down and work out who is it in midfield. Is it Kovacic or Jorginho? You know, which centre-back pairing is it going to be? Let's, I think that's what they need now, Chelsea. A little bit of consistency in their selection. Manchester United are a bit of a slow burner. It's like the handbrake's on for the team, but Fernandes, is a, I think, is an outstanding signing. But where are their goals going to come from? Martial needs to really wake up. And Manchester United, um, you can see the team growing, though. You know, having beaten Manch Manchester Man City in the Car uh, Car Carabao Cup in the week would have been a good plus point for them, but didn't take it forward and do anything against Wolves. But, you know, it was a, the game was really flat. So it's going to be quite interesting to see. And does Mourinho then, you know, does he come marching up on the sort of on the shoulder? Did nothing yesterday but win the game. Um, his experience that he has. Um, so, you know, this is going to be go right down to the wire. Um, and Spurs now will be fancying their chances to get back into the top four. But I think Chelsea, it's in, if they don't panic and they stick together, it's in their hands now, Chelsea, to finish fourth. Uh, not a lot, really, because such as the standard that they've set over the last few seasons has been remarkable. But it's very worrying for the manager when they dominated in the Carabao Cup against Carabao Cup against Manchester United and lost the game, and then they do the same against Spurs. For anyone who watched that game, they were quite magnificent. City, the way that they played, I thought they were suffocating. Spurs just couldn't get the ball in the back of the net. It's like Aguero almost forgot where the goal was. Um, they're making mistakes in front of goal, not finish off the frustration you could feel. Then the Ill, Ill discipline, the poor corner that was taken by Mares, Zinchenko getting sent off. Um, and then Otamendi for the second goal just flying out. It seems they panic a little bit when things are going wrong for them. And that's that's the difference. They can't be champions now. And that affects you in a different way, mentally. You know, when life's good and everything's great and rosy in the garden, and you, you, it's easy to go and play games. But at the moment, it's not quite right for them. So there was a big inquest after the match, and uh, rightly so. Something Wenger would never have done. We, I felt actually there was something in that, that you can only cause damage after the game when you really get into the players. But they played exceptionally well, Man City. So maybe that was the time to find out what is missing. What, why are they letting things slip away? Why are they not being ruthless enough in front of goal? And I think it's, the, it's Liverpool, what they've done. It's in the back of their minds. It hurts when you've been so dominant and so it's been wrestled away. Um, but we need City now to show character. There's plenty more to play for. Real Madrid coming up in the Real, in the Champions League, and Guardiola's getting into his team because he's not certainly not going to give up. Um, but it's about now, you know, they've got one more game to play. Unlike Liverpool, who are now on their winter break, get that one out of the way. They can rest up, work on the team, and come back for the rest of the season firing. So that will be the target for City. But. Um, to be honest, they haven't done a lot wrong, but what they do now is got to dig deep and show some character and come back with personality and stop, sh you know, shipping silly goals. Do you know? I, I don't think you can. I mean, Jurgen Klopp. What if you look at the end of last season? They won the last nine matches, and they've just gone twenty-five games, having won twenty-four of those. So, a hundred and two points available, and they've got a hundred points. World club champions, Champions League holders, 
potentially on their way to, to winning that as well. We know the Premier League's done now. We're gonna they're gonna be champions. Well, they can do it if they win the next six games, but it won't take six games when you look at Man City's fixtures and the way that they're heading. So Jurgen Klopp is he's gotta be the one who gets it. Um I think if you look at Nuno at um, Wolves, what they're doing, I, I think they've played. They're for about their fortieth game of the season at the moment. If you look, if the if the figures are correct, which is maybe eleven or twelve games more than Sheffield United, who also Chris Wilder deserves a special mention, and maybe there should be a new award for a best newcomer for Chris Wilder because what they're doing is is quite remarkable. But we're talking about here the elite managers. Um, and Jurgen Klopp will go down as one of the all-time greats from what he's achieving at that football club at the moment. For me, it has to go with him. Even now, the vote should be cast. He'd get it. 